Hey everyone, it's John Isaias here from The Automator, and again, we've had a crazy week of learning with ChatGPT, and so we're going to cover more resources and how we're using it, uh, just to show you again, give you ideas, see what's out there. I'm watching a crazy number of videos on it, and it's just amazing, so <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and jump into it. Again, any of these links you'll find on our website, um, just go to the GPT page, which we'll have uh, on the screen, and then you can go, if you can't just find it by Googling, then you can find it by there. Yeah, so, um, exactly. So the one one of them was was be human AI and it's it's just for creating custom videos and so it was kind of neat you can check it out it's um pretty powerful tool for using AI for creating videos yeah um, on my end I saw one that I do a lot of web scraping so I saw one that had to do with you know uh, browse AI is what the name of it and it it allowed me to it, it, they say that it's using AI to generate the web scraping uh logic and stuff so i i'm trying to give it a try see how it works and see if it actually does what it says it does because web scraping is really hard yeah we talk about a lot it's one of the hardest things to well usually it's automating the page right scraping also can be difficult <laughs> yeah, but... and you can actually automate hey get the get these elements from this page hit the next button and go to the next one and get all of it right and right it's pretty awesome um D dash ID. So it's it's this is one where you have like speaking avatars. So the the mouse are moving and this and that. So it's again, if you're doing stuff with avatars, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, there's another one that is used for creating kind of like little stories. Or for example, if you're doing a presentation or something, uh, that one was called Tom dot app or something like that. T O M E dot app, yeah, right. and <laughs> that one was uh, uh, very interesting for people who are doing a lot of presentations. I, I would definitely try that one out. Maybe it will make very interesting stuff for you. I did actually create an account, logged in with it. I told it to create like a uh, uh, presentation using Auto Hotkey and to convince them it's the bomb, like the amazing thing. It, <laughs> It, the only only thing I would say, and maybe there's ways to tweak it, it it was like a five or six slide, you know, deck. So it wasn't a lot, but it threw in images and had text on the images. And so it would be pretty quick and easy to create a quick summary about something. Now, and maybe there's okay. just ways to do even more, but I, I did try it out. I'm like, you know, okay, that was interesting. Um, yeah. I was telling also, Isaiah, this um, Compose AI it, it's an extension that will allow you... Now, I think mine is only running in Chrome. It's a Chrome extension. And uh -huh. it starts assisting you in your typing. Right. And I didn't like it for a couple of reasons. But again, check back in a week, right? I mean, yeah, things maybe, fast. Maybe. Yeah, it, yeah, it was auto-assisting like every word I type. It was offering up some what we think your next word is. And right. it just, for me, wasn't quite there. But... Um, I it if could. it was if it was actually suggesting a, a sentence, right, it might be a little bit better. But if it is just like the next word, it, in a computer, I don't know why. In in your mobile phone, you get this predictive predictive text on your keyboard, and nobody cares about it. But in the computer, it is kind of annoying. I don't know why. So yeah, maybe next time. I it, talking about the the automation as we were discussing previously. Uh, there was another one that allowed you to record your web browser. I, I think it was something about recording the steps that you performed, or or was it just recording the? Oh, it recorded everything. So, right. but I mean, like clicks, typing, just just your. It was a video summary, like, and then it was indexed though, because you could type and search, and it would go find. Oh, wow. wow! Yeah. <laughs> but what was so that there was actually one that monitored everything. But it's only available on a Mac, and I don't remember the name of it. But um, it was maybe stuff. maybe no. Well, the one that I was looking at was Heyday. Yeah, was that's it? the PC one. Oh, right, okay, okay. It's only doing a browser. Uh -huh. The Mac one does everything on your computer. Oh, and wow. I was telling Ryan, I'm like, yeah, there's some things I don't want captured. <laughs> you know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not all of it, please. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> it, it was pretty cool in that it, it says it compresses the crap out of that other tool, you know, and it, but it records it video, but it's indexed so you can type right. and, search and jump to, hey, what was I doing when, you know, and when you and I were talking with Jackie Stuck the other night, I was like, hey, you know what, you could easily write a loop to check every like 30 seconds of what your window title is in the active Yeah, program. yeah, we were talking about that, Just yeah. log it. And this way, if like, because we do project work, right, and we need to know who we're billing and how much, 
Uh-huh. If, if there's a block of like four hours where you had forgotten to log what you did, it'd be a uh, super simple way. Right. To just check on the, the yeah. windows that I was at, the, at that moment and I will know exactly what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. So one other one I was doing, because in and we're working on, by the way, price increase is coming for, for the mm-hmm. automator. But we're working on an email to go out to people who have done a lot of activities. And what I was thinking is that a lot of people might have multiple email addresses on the automator had submitted stuff to download things or whatnot. And so I was trying to write an algorithm to help me flag those. And so I was using ChatGPT and it came up, I mean, the Levenstein thing, we've even talked about it here before, but it was helping me write my code and show ones that were very similar. So that was, it was just cool that ChatGPT can, you ask it to solve a problem and it can offer solutions, even if it doesn't yeah. give you the code, it's just helping point you in the right direction. Yeah, so probably some instead of we creating our own function or tool to do that, we just pass a list and say, hey, try to identify the, <laughs> the same person in that list. Right. Like for example, instead of me having to create a function to do that, yeah. Um, you did mention uh, there were some resources from the previous video that you saw it after we finished the video. I think there were some mpost.io links. There was one of them that was the 100 best chat GPT prompts, right? right. Uh, did you like that one? Like, There was a was lot it? of good stuff in there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's a good one to go and find and just, just again, to give you ideas on what you can do. And the other one with it was there was one, um, the 10 best prompt. The second one, if I remember right, it gave you the concepts, but then it, you could drill down and go on the link and it would, it gave even deeper, you know, uh, ideas. Okay. So there's two about just, just to, again, I keep telling people like we miss a, We know how things work by what we see them do. And then in our brains, we say, well, that's what it does. Right. And that's it. And it's like, look, chat GPT, it can do like almost anything. Almost anything. <laughs> yeah. So but we're the, trying to throw shit at it and see what, you know, how to use it. One of the interesting things about creativity is that for you to be really creative, you have to have a lot of uh, resources. Oh. So you have to go out, talk to people so you can, your brain can become more creative. It's the same with this. If you get the 100 best chat GPT and the best 10 uh, prompts and whatever, your brain is getting filled with ideas that later on, when you have to solve a problem, your brain is going to come up with, oh, I could use this right. other way of doing it, right? So that's what it, we're trying to do here. Yeah, it's one of the things about the hero group that is so powerful is other people are watching what people are doing with AutoHotKey and going, right. I never thought about automating that, right? That, uh, that is right. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, one of the things that I, again, work a lot is doing web scraping, web requests, doing stuff with the web. And another thing that I tried, I, I don't know if you remember, Joe, that, that I had a library, uh, a CURL library, a curl right. library for a long time ago. Um, and uh, sometimes we might want to, we don't have the curl extension or whatever, and we need some win HTTP requests instead. So uh, we were trying to grab a, well, we will, prompting uh, chat GPT to create a tool that would grab CURL requests into the uh, the equivalent in uh, which HTTP requests. Because when we were dealing with APIs, there's a lot of examples that are in curl. So you can just, copy, yeah, so you just copy that, paste it in this tool, for example, and it would give you the equivalent in HTTP requests. But I, I had to create a tool. So, hey, chat GPT, go ahead and help me out doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the most frustrating things. When you go to almost any API you right. know, service, web service, you'll see curl is one of the first ones listed, then maybe Python and maybe um, a couple JavaScript or something. There's a couple others. Now, I've only once seen like a win HTTP request okay. mentioned. It wasn't auto-hockey, but at least it was win HTTP, the com object. I think, I think in PayPal, when when I was looking at PayPal, they had XHR, which is oh, okay. yeah. the, that's the JavaScript uh, X uh, HTTP okay. request. Yeah. So so I could just switch to that one, which looks very similar to what I was gonna do in Auto Hotkey. So yeah, but um, but right was why not have a tool that would take a curl request, you know, an example written yeah. for curl and convert and it, just convert it into whatever I need. Right, that's right. right. It's like yeah, that's that that's awesome and. It, I, you know, I tried it too, and it was mixed results. Like, it, it wasn't quite there. But again, it doesn't really know how to hotkey at the moment. So I'm, right. I'm okay with that, right? We'll, we'll yeah. get there. Um, another one 
just because you know i'm i'm by full admission i'm no way the best coder in the world and i'll often have inconsistencies in my code and i and i noticed like one time i had uppercased the name of a variable and one time it was lowercase and i'm like oh wait a minute why don't i just shove this the whole thing into chat gpt and tell it to standardize or normalize oh my name oh my yeah you just yeah, said uppercase them or lowercase them if I preferred. I just did. I just said standardize them, and it it did. It made them all uniform, and it was like, oh, oh my god! Like <laughs> we we know we could do a search replace for one variable and do this, and you know it wouldn't be horrible. But what do you got? Fifty variables, right? Like, right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Plan, and then tell it to annotate it at the same time. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now, uh, oh. I think we mentioned on the previous video. Using Chat GPT to solve issues with a SQL request. I don't know if we really talked about it, but basically what happened was I, I did have this issue in which I was dealing with a very complex database. Well, it is not like extremely complex, but there's a lot of things nested. There's a lot of tables. One, yeah. Right. There's a there's a table that relies on another table's data and another table's data and so on. And and there was this time one of my views, just the last part of the program. I had all my data except for one cell. That cell was null. All the other was showing up, just that one cell for that one person or that one company, whatever it was, it was null. I started myself trying to figure it out. And as soon as I realized really quickly, oh, I'm going to spend two or three hours on this one because I have to drill down on the next table and the next table. And on each table, I have to verify what the heck was happening. So I said, hold on. Here's the here's the SQL query. This is the problem that I'm having. Why is it coming out no? And it said, well, there are several reasons why that might be. And it gave me three reasons. The first two, I said, like, no, those are okay. The, that table has data. This other thing is, oh, so this one, let me go ahead and check on that. When I went, that one was having issues. I said, okay, here's the SQL query for that one. Why is it having issues? Oh, your join might be incorrect and whatever. So I went like that. And in less than 15 minutes, I was able to find what the heck was going on. Um, sadly, it had to do with the data that we were scraping. So <laughs> that was something that I couldn't fix. Right. The data that I was getting from their page was wrong. So, But in general, I, I spent 15 minutes in something that I know for sure to me. I, I would have taken a few hours just because I'm not like very good at SQL. I, I, I'm just understanding, but that table was really complex. She made it so easy to just go, just told me what to look for. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It, it reminds me when I was first learning statistics years ago with like regression and, and different types of stuff. And my mentor, I would get stuck on something and I'd call, cause I was in Georgia and he's in California and I'd call him on the phone. This is a long, long time ago. And, uh, I'd say like, hey, I have this problem, I'm trying to do this. And he wouldn't have the data, yet he could in his head say, oh, you probably want to do this and that. And I'm like, right. yeah, okay, how yeah. are you doing that? You know, like, <laughs> like, here, like you said, it didn't have our data. It right. just had queries and was yet still able to kind of point you in the right direction. And that, right. that was really impressive. Yeah. Um, I'm going to jump ahead one. So, because you touched, you you can cover this other one that's in between. But um, I used it to, I was backfilling in the survey tool we use, you can, before you extract your data, you can go in and give it better variable names. So when you export your data, they're more what you want. Well, the problem is you can't have spaces in the names and there's also a, a limit on the number of characters. So what I would often do before was I go in and I would replace the spaces with underscores and then I would try to truncate the words. So it was, it would shrink them down and be more concise. And I realized you know, A, at some point, the survey tool, they'll be using AI for doing this already, right? Like, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we have API access to it, but for this, it, there weren't that many. So I just still use ChatGPT, where I wrote I wrote a script because what was really weird was you couldn't, with the way they built the web page, you couldn't copy the text from the page. It was like uh, not disabled, but it was grayed out, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, like, like cues. Th those were cues. So... Um, in an edit control, you have where you can type text, but if there is no text there, you can show display oh, what you. you can put there, what you can right. put there. So those are called text cues. Yeah. But the problem is those text cues, you cannot copy them because those yeah. are not text, right? So yeah. they're, they're not, there's nothing there. It's just displayed. Yeah. So I used the script, which uses the uh, U, UIA model to get the text under the mouse. And it actually reliably got that text for me. So I'd hit a hotkey. 
it'd get that text, it would pull it into the clipboard, it would surround it with my prompt to chat GPT to say, hey, take the following sentence, replace spaces with quotes, I'm sorry, underscores, underscores. Yeah. try to condense words. This actually took me a little while to, to get it to work right. Because yeah. again, we're learning how to ask questions, right? So to get the right. prompt right, to say, truncate each word to a maximum of like four characters abbreviating it, uh, but not right. changing. So the first, it was rewinding the sentence. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It, it needs to really it. be close. <laughs> it just needs to be more concise or shorter. I so think, anyway, so it, it it dumped it in there, brought it back, and man, it was it was really nice. But I think you you remember that when we were dealing with the API, you have these set settings to set like the temperature to yep. let it be more sure. creative right. or less. So as we cannot we cannot control that in right. Chat GPT on the on their uh, web interface. Yeah, in the uh, free version, the browser that's not right. you you cannot modify that. But in the API, yeah. we could have told it, yeah, I, don't, don't don't be creative, please. I actually <laughs> thought about that just because I'm like, well, we already have that configured. It'd be very right. to take what I highlight, use the API to send it, get the results, and put it right back on my clipboard and paste. Right, exactly, and paste it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but that's right. Again, this was a one-off thing, so I'm like, yeah. you know what, it's fine for now. But that yeah. was one. I'm like, man, this is you know, this is where the future is going to be. Right, it's yeah. really. Now, tell us about the, the basics. Uh, Jesus Christ. So what happened was um, I was uh, I was dealing with an API. Now, again, we are trying to write more scripts in V2. The one problem that V2 has is that there's not many libraries out there. So we have a base64 encoder in V1. I went ahead and searched on the forums for an encoder for V2. The ones available, they were not good. And the one that was good that that I saw that it was good, it was returning the wrong data. So minor detail. Minor detail, right? <laughs> it was just one letter. It was just one letter that it was always putting it wrong. So in the, when I used an online tool, the last letter was an equal sign, which is a padding for when the when the string does not have the number of characters needed for the encoding. So it puts a, an equal sign. Um, but the tool that I was getting, instead of having an equal sign, it was having the letter A in there. I was like, why? I started going down on the, down that, the, that rabbit hole. I started trying to figure it out. At some point, I, I, I said, hold on, what am I doing? Let me put the thing in chat GPT. Let me see what it says. It was telling me, well, the problem is that the function is doing this, this, and that. And I gave it the V1 code and the V2 code, why is one good and why is the other one is not good? And it actually said like, there is a difference in the size. So the size of the string, whenever you're passing it to the function that is doing the encoding, text in computers usually saved with the text of every single character. And in the end you have a null character is what it tells the computer to stop right there and not read anymore. What happens is in the V1 code, the person had removed from the size minus one character because he's accounting for that null character. Right. Don't send it to the thing, right? So he did that in a, in a location that I didn't see it. I didn't see when he did that. So I was like, I'm sending the same size. What the heck is going on? When I figured it out, when it said, told me like the size are different, I went ahead and checked the code again. And I was like, of course. <laughs> Like, doing what I told it to. Yeah. <laughs> so in general, uh, 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 as soon as I did that, the function started working. I have this library now. I saved it in my code. I said, like, I'm not going to spend that much time anymore <laughs> trying to figure that one out. But I, I, I have been using uh, ChatGPT in many instances just to fix or troubleshoot programs that I'm working with because I, I don't want to spend that much time troubleshooting. I want to spend time building the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what we all almost need is a as a, a prompt on a set timer of every three minutes just pop up and say, Can you use chat GPT for that? For that. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. So Can you use it for it. that? Like, yeah. You know, it's funny because we were talking to Jackie the other day, and I don't remember if you're still in the call at this point as I asked, but um he was mentioning where he works. There's a lot of a lot of people, and this is in a in a place where it's a monopoly, you know, there's no competition. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people's thought process, they're, he's like, they're never going to use this because they they have mundane work, but it's what they know. And that's what they're comfortable doing. Right. And it's just funny because it's like, 
people like doing what they know. And even if it's dumb, you're like, I know it. Right. And people don't want to learn new yeah. stuff. And it's easy to say, oh, hey, OK, well, I'll just go do this part. It's a little mundane, but I can, but you know what? Like, just get the damn no, yeah. it's amazing at execution at process execution, not necessarily making decisions. Right. But give yeah. us the list of ideas, you know, and, and we decide yeah. quickly and let it implement. Right. Like that's what right. we're got to focus on more and more. Um, yeah, that's right. Now, I, I did like that you you were talking about some uh, you, you were watching some videos. Actually, you sent me one of them. Uh, I think. Yeah, you sent me the first one yeah. um, in which they were listing a few tools yeah. that also use chat. Well, use AI yeah. to to do the stuff right yeah. now. Uh, they make a, a, a top 10 list or something like that. I saw the Boomy, which was creating music. Yeah. You just gave it like yeah, how tempo, the, sound, the, the, yeah, yeah. The, the genre, the type, the right. tempo. And right. you could actually even create vocals as well. And I was like, wow. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. I pass that on to Dylan. I knew it was a D. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm like, this dude, this is crazy. There was a second one I passed over to him, which I don't remember the name of it, but I think it's in here in our list. And it actually, but it, it would remove sound, like you could separate, oh, here's music, separate the person from the music or separate the flute. Oh, wow, that's, yeah. like, wow, that's amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah. So, all right. So let's keep going. So Boomy was really cool. Fake You was interesting, but it, it's it's more about like text, their sex speech, but you can have celebrities. So like we could have the Terminator. Actually, I was going to go there and see if they have Bill Gates and say, you know, the automator, or I was, it's funny, I was going to say Bill Gates, but I was using the Terminator's voice. The automator is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. The other one was Runway that I think yeah. uh, Ryan said that he used yeah. that. Runway to uh, create, remove stuff from video. So you, you have a video. And this is, again, I have worked with video editing and doing removing something that is moving in the video is oh, a nightmare right which is why i can't also wait because we both were in the davinci resolve a lot right. and i love it overall it's a great tool but the fusion is that what's called the the, uh -huh. the one the, for the for for audio? Stuff. i'm like oh, no. oh for the love of god isn't it <laughs> that's the name of the tab right i think um, no no the, the 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 other one the fair light well yeah the fusion is the one for the animation yeah that's that I'm That's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on. <laughs> uh, uh, Camtasia really does, you know, it's so better. Simple, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, the, this one's more powerful, but it's so hard to use. Well, with yeah. tools like this, in that video, they're like, here's a video with a plane flying through the middle of the sky with clouds just, behind it. Just and they're like, just outline the plane and it disappears. It, it knows. So, yeah. so for, for those who do video editing, the name of what we're referring to is rotoscoping. If you're doing rotoscoping a lot, this tool might remove that particular type of work out of your workflow very quickly. You just paint it. That's what I want to remove. And it goes ahead and removes it. That's yeah, it. It's crazy. It's really yeah. crazy just to watch. You're like, damn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> flow CV. So if you have a resume or you know your CV, depending on where you live, how you refer to it, but it, it does, a, does a good job if you're looking for a job, right, to be able to optimize. Actually, Ryan and I were on a call. We were talking one time. He's like, wait a minute, when you're applying for a specific job, you could have it automate your resume for that job. Like just right, exactly. Yeah. mention these things, mention these things and have it customized. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Designify, was it the other one that it yeah. had to do to create, uh, well, edit pictures or create kind of like a design out of it. And you said like, you, I don't know why, what would I use that for, but in my case, um, I was a business owner and part of my job was to take pictures of the products and make them appealing, right? But the problem is I took the pictures with a white screen so I could go ahead and yeah. clean up or whatever. With this thing, you just pass it a, a, a picture. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter how it looks. It would, using AI, separate the elements and create a design behind the product that you want to show. So it was, it, if I had, that tool at that time, I would have spent less work doing oh, that. So it was amazingly. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's the stuff. Anytime we have a picture, it needs editing. I, I come to you because you're you know Photoshop really well as well. Right. And to to change like, but it was showing. Hey, change that shirt to be a blue shirt instead right. of. A, and it you know it, it's crazy. Like you just got to watch <laughs> stuff on it. 
Um, right. Designify also is another one where if That's you're the editing, one that I was referring oh, was to, I'm sorry, yeah. Google Render Forest is what it, it, you can create high quality graphics, but also animated videos out of the stuff as well, which was, was pretty darn cool. Right. Then the other one was Hue Mint or something like that, that allowed you to create the color schemes, which is what you said. Yep. Now, for me, this one was great. It, it allowed you to create okay. schemes for for your uh, your branding colors right. or something right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one was fun. It was called Quick Draw with Google. And you basically are drawing the screen and it's guessing what you're drawing. I don't think it's seen me draw because that would be, you know, an impossible task. But, <laughs> you know, it, it did sound interesting and could be a fun game at home too, right? Of like, you know, who can who can draw the concept fastest where the computer gets it, right? Before, you know, not a human does, but the computer. Right. Writer that allows you to kind of like, well, this one I would say does exactly what ChatGPT is for. So you pass it some ideas and it would just write a blog post or something like that. Yep. which is basically what chat GPT is all about. The only thing is that probably with that one, you have some other options. They probably have some drop down options to make it a little bit easier, but it creates the prompt for you that in the end is gonna be basically, I could have done that on chat GPT, but they're making it easier for you. Yeah, and it, it if I remember right, it, it it put it into different, it was easy to say, okay, fulfill on these different parts of it and, and just compartmentalize a little more. It was it was much more of a GUI interface instead of just one chat, like do Right, that. exactly, that's what I mean, yeah. So they had a, an interface that yep. made it a little bit easier to select a few things that, instead of you having to type a prompt or something. Yeah, and in video is another really cool one that you can create videos from pictures and text, uh, which yeah. is still, it's, yeah, it's boggling where we're going with this. Right, that's for sure. That video that you showed me was really great. It was a very short, quick, and it had yeah. some examples. So I, I liked it really much. And then you sent another video that was talking about, you know, again, text to video. Did you? I think you remember that one was Steve.ai is called the, the, the page. And, and, and it allowed you to grab some text and then create a whole video out of that. So for example, you just told the story. Okay, I want the person walking on the street and doing this, this, and that. And it would create a video out of that. That was insane, actually. I was like, what? <laughs> I, I played with this one a little. Supreme.ai, it, it's uh, it's one where you can create mem. So I had one that I was like, well, let me, let me take this phrase and put it in and see what it does. And I didn't end up using what it gave me, but it was interesting to see it created like a dozen mems for free. And I had up to like seven or 10 more, you know, uses of it. Um, I don't know if it's per month or what. It had all these different pictures and it changed the text I wrote too, but it was all related and it was still really neat, you know, to, uh -huh. to how quickly you can create a mem. So if, if you're drawing a blank on like how, hey, I want to make fun of this or I want to do something with this, um, it can really help you very quickly. Yeah, the other one was uberdoc.ai. That that is similar to another one that uh, right. we were talking. The fake you.com is is very similar in the sense of you you is text to speech, but then you select the voice of the person speaking, which is usually a famous person or something right. like that. Clean up pictures. This this was similar to one of the other ones of just you can submit pictures and just very very quickly and easily clean clean them up, remove stuff from them, you know, and just you know them. what, uh, Photoshop now comes with that. Yeah. So Photoshop, actually, when I select certain areas and I say I want to remove that or hit delete or whatever, it actually uses AI to go ahead and modify that section of the picture. So these kind of things, they are getting, as, as you mentioned, companies are going to be using AI more and more. So let me see. Hold on. Yeah, it, it mentions it. So you mean I'm going to have to upgrade from my Paint Shop Pro, which was built in 1999? Because that's, that's what I still use. <laughs> I guess maybe, maybe it's time to... Maybe it's time. But Photoshop already has AI tools. That's for sure. Yeah. I remember seeing some stuff with it. It's just, right. it's so much in there that when you're, you know, new to it, this is like Canva nailed it. And Canva's starting to use AI as well if you're, you know, using their tool um, for doing stuff. But it, it nailed the simplicity, right? Maybe yeah. Um, and yet still, you can do advanced stuff, but they make the interface simple, which is really, yeah. really helpful. Now, the other one, this one, I think uh, many people have heard about, like myheritage.com, yeah. right? That this, I have seen ads for that for, you know, in any, in many places, which is you pass uh, pictures of, you know, your relatives, older pictures, and they kind of like animate it a little bit. 
And some people really react to that because they see their relatives kind of like moving again, which is it's insane. Yeah, but it's insane. It's like, holy yeah. crap, you know? But yeah. this is the point. So, for example, I, I, I never met my grandmother, for example. Oh, right. So so I never seen her. The only thing I have seen in my life is a picture, which yeah. is static. I cannot relate to that. But if I see it moving, even if it's just a little bit, it looks like a real person a little bit. And maybe I can get a little cool. bit of right. an idea of what type of person she might have looked like, yeah. which is insane, actually. That's, yeah. that's weird. Yeah, um, this is the other one. And oh, mercy! They, some of these people, they really got to work on their their, their name. Lalal, Dot AI. Yeah, separate. So this is the one where you can separate audio, certain tracks. You know, people from certain tracks, or the the certain instruments from the track, or whatever. That's amazing. It sounded really. I haven't tested it because I don't really have a use case necessarily. Maybe I can use it to remove the dogs and. No, no. Well, that's one. But basically, two things. For example, uh, noise removal. For example, if I'm making a video, I'm going to take my voice, separate it, and everything else, I just remove it. That's it. That's one. Second of all, it might be, for example, for people who like karaoke, if I have a song, I just pass the song and say, remove the voice. Uh, so if oh, I remove the voice, then I have just the just the, just right. the music instead of having to search for it in YouTube because my girlfriend loves that and she's always in YouTube finding karaoke with lyrics and I'm like, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble and say, see, my wife tries to sing and so <laughs> will it? I not hear her anymore? Well, that anyway, yeah, um, yeah. There's a. Uh, Okay, so the last one we had was, I just saw a note, it was interesting, Google Docs and Google Slides now have better support with AI built into it. And if I remember right, I think someone chimed in in the hero group that um, that's only a, for Excel has it, but only in Excel 365, I think is what he said was, you know. You can, oh, yeah, 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 it's true, yes. You know. Now, the last one, let me go ahead and share my, let me pull up ChatGPT. Now, it's, it's actually having some issues right now. And... Uh, let me share my screen. What we what we're going to work on. So I was talking with uh, Isaiah and Ryan and stuff, and we're both we're all of us are using it a lot. And so for this video each week, I wanted to have people. Unfortunately, this for some reason right now is truncated. We think that maybe they restructured their database, so we're we're not sure. You know, I don't know why this has high demand, but I'm still able to use the tool. That seems <laughs> weird. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to write a tool. Yeah, let me start. We're going to use UIA. So I'm going to open the Accessibility Insights tool. Right. And we're going to build a tool, a very simple one, that's just when you, like, here we can see what that one is, right? But you said, oh. Well, you, you clicked on it. So just just there hover over. Yeah, so yeah, there we go. So, so now. So this will extract this and maybe either copy it to the clipboard or paste it into an email, um, and then you can easily send it to whoever you want, hopefully to us. Right. <laughs> but it's a great way to be like, hey, how did you use ChatGPT this last week? Right. right. Like, I have a really long list. Unfortunately, it's not pulling it, but this is a great way because right now there's no way to easily grab this list. No, That's yeah, yeah. And and any time we, we, we ask the, the, the HK heroes, hey, how have you been using? They they just go by memory or right. they just get the the last few because they don't they're right. not gonna type all that. But right. if you have the tool that you just press F1, it gets the list, um, the whole list or the visible ones, doesn't matter. We have a list of the latest ones and you just send it to us and then we can talk about it in the in one of the videos like yeah. this. To give ideas to other people about how you can use it. There's a lot of ways that you can use this tool. We're just learning now what are the ways that you can use this thing for. Yeah, the last one just and we we didn't share it because it also didn't necessarily work exactly the way we wanted to. But we on one of our scripts, the GUI, it was built a long time ago and it was built where the elements were not relative. The um Rel yeah, the position of the elements were not relative to one another because they were they had like absolute positions x ten and y two hundred and thirty, and the problem was you just asked me okay let's add a, 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 a link somewhere, and I was like as soon as I put the link the whole thing broke and I was like holy crap now I have to modify yeah <laughs> I have to modify all the positions 
Uh, and, and then you said, why don't we pass that to ChatGPT and just tell it to convert it into relative locations? And I was like, that's a very good idea. Like I just pass a GUI and say, make the controls relative to one another. And okay. even though we tried like a few times, um, there was one of them that it started making what we were asking it right. to do. It just missed a few. And I was like, yeah, if we said this and that, it would have done it. But it is amazing that it would have saved me so much time, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> because I don't have to think about it. I just pass it and it comes back with the with the results. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and part of it also, this is why we I definitely encourage you guys to be using it because how to ask a question to it, you know, it takes practice, right? And yeah. this is where it's like, you know, depending on what you're asking about, Simple questions, you know, it's not hard, but boy, when you want a more specific, it's the back, actually, I'd say with the images are really the ones that really make a difference. You see some of these beautiful images people do. You don't just say, make me an alien in front of a ship, right? Like it would give you something really crappy, probably. Like, right. You know, I, I've tried it. Like I, uh, Dali the one, or, yeah, Dali, yeah. right. And every time it brought a picture, I was like, this is shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the heck is that? And then I stopped using it, but it is true what you say. Right. It's just because I was not being specific enough. Probably right. those people are writing a very big prompt that actually uh, gives very detailed uh, things for it. Here, here's a, I, I had told it in this one because I created a blog post on auto hockey versus Python. So I asked it, draw a green age fighting a blue snake. Right? <laughs> and and it, it tried, you know, but I, I also <laughs> said, I actually said, because I said draw, it, right. these are drawings. These aren't like right. paintings. That's for sure. The other big one was when, when talking to Jackie too, it's like, I was trying to use it to create like a button that did a uh, 200% money back. Cause that's what our, our stuff all has. And it was really messy. Cause the thing was, you can't tell it be creative here and not here. Like don't change the text. The text needs to be X. So um, what we realized was maybe what we should do is say, you know, the, the image will have a yellow box or a green box or ellipse in the center you know, with that's solid, right? And that way, right. yeah, it is done. very specific. You're very yeah. specific on that, yeah. And then we can overlay after we get it out. We can overlay the um the text we want, right? But it's uh -huh. you want it to create, be creative on other stuff, not on the text, right? Okay, yeah. So anyway, yeah. nice. I hope that helps. Um, like again, every week we'll be recording more stuff and what we're doing, how we're using it, um, and putting highlights to video. So go to the URL and. If any of those links that you wanted to see, you know, go check them out. They're they're there, and it, it, you know, submit them to us too if you find some cool stuff. I, I loved it. it. There's so much; it's exploding like crazy, right? Yeah. So we want to hear about. It. We did actually see another video on how easy it was to train ChatGPT to, and so it what they in the video they demonstrated. Um, let's say they took all of the let's say the cars. That's a band I used to listen to a lot. And got the, the got the lyrics for them, and then they took the first like five words and said, "Okay, here's the prompt. They use the first five words from the song, and then the answer would be all of the lyrics to the song." And so they did this with like 200 songs, and then they could very easily like type a prompt right, with the, begin the beginning of a yeah. song, and it would just go ahead and oh wow. So they're basically showing how you train it. But what was really cool, I thought it was a great example of just how simple the training can be, right? It was like, hey, here's this text. This is what I expect back. Here's this text. This is what I expect back. And because ChatGPT now basically understands language and context, you don't have to submit gigs of data, right? Mm -hmm. You're just fine-tuning your model. Exactly. And that'll be, you know, when you do that, it, it probably would work for your session, but it's not going to stick, right? When you come back, it's gone. Now, if you have the API, you can create your own environment and that's where you're paying money to shove the stuff in there. And then you have that training and you can keep using it, right? So right. that's what we were like going, hey, we could create a, um, like even the the GIF, um, excuse me, the GUI converter, right? Um, to create, or yeah, to, let's say to, to, to convert the... Um, V1 where the v2, right? right. Or, or, or the relative yeah, position. One, right? Um, and have that in our own environment, and then we can use it, or we make it available. The problem is there's costs involved. That's where it gets tricky of, of you know, how do we open that up without losing a fortune? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's still, 
it's amazing to me that you can like actually the other one I mentioned of the truncating of the survey tool names like that would be a super simple one to to teach it very yeah. quickly and then to be able to reuse that one over and over right like right that's for sure all right well thank if you if you learned something or are still enjoying these videos please like the videos if you if people stop liking them we'll stop making them so yeah it's <laughs> a promise but yeah. <laughs> and a 200 percent guarantee <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. Bye.